In my territory of Southeast Iowa, the whitetail hunting can be incredible, but not all places are created equal. What makes it really good is the variety of landscape across this region and across the Midwest, in fact. You have big ag fields, brushy fence lines, rolling hardwood ridges, overgrown pasture. You have the perfect variety of food, water, and cover so that these deer can grow to optimum age and size. But quite frankly, just because we're in Iowa, not all places are created equal. Factors like neighbors, size of parcels, how your cover lays out, where your food sources are, the topography, genetics, all of that comes into play when you're trying to determine if you're looking at a great hunting farm or just a mediocre area. Some people are really happy with being able to just go out and chase three and four year old whitetails and that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of our clients will come to us and really expect to be able to grow top age class whitetails. And there's certain areas of this region where it's better than others because the neighbors are working together on common management practices. So there's a lot of reasons why Iowa can be absolutely great, but there's a lot of factors why it can be mediocre in certain places. It's about as prime of an evening as you can get, late October. I'm proud to call Southern Iowa my office and my playground. It's amazing outside. Sun's just dropping. The leaves are in full color. And I'm sitting over an electric green patch of clover tonight. I call this the power clover. I've got Micah behind the camera. This is our second hunt together. We're looking for a deer named Clyde. Clyde is a big six plus year old animal, five by six. He doesn't have a super rack, but we're hunting maturity on this farm. It's such a beautiful night. We've got the wind in our face, steady 10 mile per hour. We, we slipped in here and hung these stands. We feel like we're prepared all the time, but come hunting season, we make adjustments. So this is where we're at tonight. Couldn't be more excited to sit over this clover plot. These deer are not in rut mode yet. They're in pre-rut, checking scrapes. Starting to get out a little bit earlier. First doe that comes by, I'm gonna shoot it. I missed one the other night. So we're gonna try to get the rust knocked off a little bit. Hopefully we see Clyde. Meh, <laughs> meh. It, it, it looks like I hit her through the shoulder. Man, look at that hole, holy buckets. I hit her right behind us, a really good shot, right in the heart. She died super quick, we heard her go down. So, always good to have a quick kill. First one down together, buddy. Yep, that was awesome. fun. All right. I guess we'll clean her.
So coming into this season, it's a new chapter in my hunting career. I'm able to hunt an awesome farm with a lot of habitat, a lot of food sources that I planted this year, help my client try to reach and obtain his management goals on the farm, and we're going after some big deer. What's exciting is I think these deer are gonna be predictable and we're gonna be able to strategize and really try to dial into, use our wits against theirs, and be able to hunt them as opposed to just trying to get lucky in the rut, which is historically my style of hunting. I haven't hunted a lot of big farms with food plots and management practices on them, and I'm really excited to take that step into my hunting career, but historically, I've been a November guy, get deep in the cover and just log the hours and wait for a good buck to come through. summertime I was getting pictures of ET right in this general area. So I threw three grunts at him and I saw he stopped and so right away just my intuition kicked in. I didn't think too much about it but I snort wheezed at him. Here he comes. That arrow arcs right under his heart. He was at 42 and not 32. He was further up the hill than when I ranged. Because I was in the moment, I didn't stop and question if I was shooting the right range where he was. I just told myself that hole's 32, he was a little bit further. Thank goodness, it was a clean miss and I didn't spook him. He kind of trotted up the hill, looked back twice. What the heck was that? And he just slowly walked his way up towards them. And even though it was a heartbreaker, man, what an amazing encounter. I drew too early. I, I don't know, maybe not. It, gets, it starts to get really open here. 
I thought he was gonna come right on our lap. The thing is, the rest of the day, I was totally drained, physically. I'm in decent shape. I felt like a truck hit me. I had so much adrenaline, and from holding that bow back for so long, it drained me for the rest of the day. And so we moved locations uh, further up the creek bottom, uh, but mentally, I was just, I was just roasted for the, for the rest of the day. It was kind of a slow evening, and so I was looking forward to just getting some rest and moving on after that awesome but disappointing encounter with E.T. This year, we feel like the deer are gonna be a little bit more predictable on how we can strategize, especially because of our food sources. Those does are gonna be there, and even come November, those bucks are gonna not go too far because there's so many does on this farm, and we think we can get ahead of them and really strategize and dial in. So that's what I'm really excited about this season. It feels good to put a good shot on a deer after a miss. I missed E.T. yesterday morning. about ready to get out of the stand. The wind's getting weird in here. These does came up and I just double lunged one. She's dead right on the other side of the honeysuckle. Back on the board. 15 yard shot. That'll boost the confidence. Pretty good size doe. That's where I want to hit them. Perfect shot. Between the power, uh, in between the North Pole and the Tower of Death. The Tower of Death is a blind. The North Pole is a stand that's a little bit out of the game. We're getting in between them, and this is going to be the Pole of Death. We got enough wind tonight where we feel confident hanging this stand. Uh, food plot to the west, food plot to the east, wind in our face really tight gap and this nice scrape that they've been hitting. We're going after an eight plus year old whitetail tonight. I don't wanna move around too much. So I'm gonna sit down and watch to the left here, to the west. Him, right? I think so, isn't it? Yeah, it's him. Yeah. Just kill Clyde. You got him. He's 
smoke. <laughs> Good shot, dude. Perfect. Did you, hear, did you hear a roar? Hello? I just killed a giant. No. Get squeak and come on down. Greg, how am I going to do that? What? He has food in the room. Oh. He is a beast. Do you have him? He, we heard him crash. What a tank. Hunters have different goals for hunting season. Some want to kill the biggest buck out there. Some want to kill the most deer they possibly can. Some just want to see a lot of deer and some just want to get away from everybody else and be in a situation where they're all alone and not seeing other hunters. And in this case with Ben, he's a diehard archer hunting during the rut, sees the deer that he wants and misses. Oh, we have all been there. We know how hard that is. And I love to tell people that even if you're not seeing the deer that you want to see, or maybe it's quiet where you are, you're just not seeing anything. If it's the rut, keep going because anything can happen at any minute. And that's exactly what happened for Ben in this situation. Deer are a keystone species. So by managing habitat for whitetails, we can ensure that we're providing good habitat for a whole slew of other whitetail species. So, National Deer Association can help you do a better job managing both that cover and food for deer, and in the same time, make sure that turkeys, songbirds, squirrels, foxes, and a whole suite of other wildlife species are well taken care of as well. I want to talk about a couple of the challenges that I faced this year in hunting season. One of them was food plots. So I'm on a new farm this year, and I planted a lot of food plots, a lot of different food sources, but in the Midwest, especially this southern portion of the state this year, we were faced with some really dry conditions right after planting season, and some of the corn that we planted just didn't emerge very well. And so the food plots were a struggle between the lack of rainfall in the beginning of the spring and then the deer pressure. On this farm, there is way too many deer to be able to grow quality food plots and let them get up out of the ground like soybeans and corn without having just terrible pressure on them. And so the deer numbers are a big challenge on this farm and I'm making it a mission, along with my client who owns this farm, we're gonna work together to try to lower the deer numbers by harvesting a lot of does and a lot of these mature bucks that may not be superior racks, but are at that top age class that are pushing some of these younger bucks around. The deer I killed last night, he is a perfect example of a buck you wanna take off a farm like this. He's six plus years old and he was pushing other bucks around 10 points and and young nine points that have a lot of potential to grow into giants, and he was shoving them all around. I'm really proud of this deer, but when it comes to this farm, there's a number of bucks that are in that bully category or in that ultra dominant category that need to come off the farm. And so when you have a big farm that has all this habitat and it's growing a lot of whitetails, you have to take initiative and try to control and manage that population. That's a huge part of what this season's goals look like.